This game is T and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. One week, one vacation, and one sprained ankle later, yep. we are back yeah. for more Miles Edge or Face Attorney Investigations, everybody. So Marty took a trip to California Which over the last awesome. like week and a half. Already sprained his ankle. That's less fun. But we're still continuing. So Marty probably forgot a lot of okay, what's happened in I, this case. I know that we landed because I talked to you about this earlier. And so you were we like, landed. Please, do you remember anything? <laughs> There's the guy who died in the elevator. And right, right. So the and killer, he looked like Mr. Stewart. Yeah, the killer put him like presumably put him in this rolling suitcase. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're trying to transport him because there's the bloody cop still in that one suitcase. Yeah, we have the narcoleptic flight attendant who doesn't know how to button a shirt properly. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, You've got the normal flight attendant who couldn't get permission and lied about it. Uh huh. And then you've got Borginian boy who's like, I. Time is money! I'm the worst! Yeah. Alright, let's go, let's go. It's March 12th, 1 p.m. local time. Wait. Hope Springs oh, Airport. I thought the boy was fixing the plane. I'm like, that's the smallest little plane in existence. <laughs> no, he's looking at yeah, the plane. Yeah, he's looking at it. Okay. I know that once we had landed, I'm supposed to let the local police take over. And thanks to Miss Tenero and Miss Meal, I was able to preserve the crime scene. But I just can't shake it. I wasn't able to talk with Miss Tenero in private. So I'm left wondering just what was she up to? Why did she do what she did? Did they get through customs? Or is he waiting for the... This is like the gate. The gate? Oh, yeah, it's gate 2. Or gate 12. Yeah, or one 32. Of there must be a way for me to continue my investigation. <gasps> Who's that? Ah! Yes! Yes, yes, yes! You got way I too excited even, about that. I didn't that. even get to say the line. <laughs> I've been expecting you miles as you were. Yeah, so that was her silhouette at the beginning. I can't believe you, like, you're a person with short hair. It's Francisca! I thought, but the sleeves. I thought the sleeves showed up. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, Francisca's in the game. Yes! Is she, is she your favorite character? Probably. Wow, really? She's so, she's so complex. And I really liked how the entire first game, it's like, oh my gosh, this evil dude. And he's so obnoxious. What do you mean the entire first game? He's in no, one case. Okay, there's that whole big case. He tases us. He takes the evidence. He like hides it all in the dirt. Then like one Goes to bullet. The spa. Yeah, one bullet in his shoulder is the reason he gets out. And then literally his daughter is the prosecutor in the next game. And it's so interesting how it lines up. Plus she knows Edgeworth. <laughs> and I really like her style. Plus, Plus she knows she's, karate. <laughs> she's like 18 and a prosecutor. Uh, she's 19 or 20 in this one. Though. Oh. oh she, we haven't profile, met her yet. Her profile hasn't showed up. Franziska, I thought you were still in Germany. I go where I'm needed. And wherever there are criminals to be caught. Her name is Franziska von Karma. The daughter of my mentor, Manfred von Karma. She, like myself, is a prosecutor. Are you heading up this case? It would be a bit of a relief if you are. Don't you try to flatter me, Miles Edgeworth. I'm placing you under arrest. What? what? It's quite frustrating, actually. I had hoped to exact my revenge on you in a different venue. But I'll have to take what I can get. I never thought I'd see the day. When a disciple of the House of Von Karma would become a criminal! Have you no shame? Um, have you forgotten your dad, who was way worse? Uh-huh, exactly. <laughs> he's dead now. He's, he's not dead. Yeah, he is. Prison. They executed him? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> we were in that in the third game, where Phoenix is like, her, yeah, her father, Manfred Von Karma, like, uh, but he's no longer of this world. <laughs> oh. Because he, it was, he got he got arrested he, on the end of the statute of limitations, so his execution probably happened really quickly after that. Or in reality, he was just like, I can't get my spa day. My spa day. <laughs> And then he had a nerve, and then he died. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, it has all been a big misunderstanding. I didn't kill the victim. A misunderstanding? I heard all about the murder over the police radio from the captain himself. You waited for the victim on the first floor, and then beat him to death. Francisca, do you honestly believe that I killed a man? I suppose I should reserve judgment until I have investigated this for myself. I can put your arrest on hold until then. That's as it should be. Ha! Huh. 
I don't need a lecture on how to perform my duties from all of you of all people. To be perfect in every way, the fulfillment of that creed alone is all that I strive for. Well, I have my own creed, which I must fulfill, so why don't we solve this together? Yes, please! Partners! I have to get going. The crime scene awaits. Don't you dare leave town. Trust me, I had no intention to. Detective Gumshoe! Yes, sir! Too slow. No! Oh! Listen up! I'm leaving you in charge of watching this man. Don't mess up, understand? Mr. Edgeworth, I I'm supposed to guard him? A simple yes or no, detective. Ah! Yes, sir! Understood, sir! Uh, you just leave it to me. Miles Edgeworth, if you interfere with my investigation, I'll arrest you on the spot. Are we clear? Now then, if you'll excuse me. I'm so happy. <laughs> this is exactly what I needed at the end of a really long day. <laughs> Good to see you again, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Boy, am I glad to see you're okay. Keep in mind, Gum this cut takes place before, chronologically before the first case. So, Gumshoe hasn't seen Edgeworth since he went abroad. Right, right, which okay. Which explains the reunion. Thank you, detective. I believe in you, sir! You can lean on me! I'll get you through this! I have to admit, I'm a bit curious as to what Franziska is up to. Maybe I should ask the good detective. Very well. In that case, I have a few questions for you. But can we ask the, the, the lady who's selling cigars? Question oh, mark? she's 19. She's 19? So this takes place right after Trials and Tribulations, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, but I want to talk to the weird lady. We can, okay. Hmm, Lunchland. Not bad. I guess it's gotten big enough to warrant its own branch shops. Hmm, hmm. Which should I go with? I recommend our airport special, World Flags Lunchboxes. Only available for a limited time. We have a variety of lunchboxes made up to look like different countries' flags. I wonder if they're aiming to take Lunchland to the international market. We recognize the name Lunchland from anywhere? Is that, um, Angel Stars? Yeah. Or just, yup? <laughs> yes, it is. Talk to the child. I can't believe there's no one manning the counter when a murder has just occurred. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. He clear. shrugged just like, well, what you, you gonna, gonna do? do? <laughs> what a view of the planes preparing for takeoff. Besides the turbulence, they're not really not all that bad as a mode of transportation. Child. Talk to the kid. This child seems to be happily enjoying the sight of so many planes. You're creeping up. Wow! I'd love to take a run down that runway! Oh, the youth of today. So much potential, yet so misguided. Also, really annoying voices. <laughs> it doesn't have to be. Who's the dude eating the hot dog or something? Hmm? Looking from behind, I think I've seen this man somewhere Is that before. Salmonella? Oh, no, 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 no! Soviet Russia World Flags Lunchbox is eating It is! <laughs> Found it! LOL! Ooh, I feel a wave created of powers coming on! It's over 9,000! LOLs! For my next meat movie, it's gonna be The Steel Samurai, Warrior of Neo, Old Tokyo, versus The World Samurai, Champion of the Earth, it's Rocks or Soul Bunny Box Sword! <laughs> So the Steel Samurai is finally getting a movie. <laughs> wow, that would be so confusing if you didn't know what who he was. Who he was. Also, shouldn't he be in jail since he helped out Vasquez kill the guy? Or, but he didn't uh, know. Cover up the crime. He totally knew. Oh, he covered he, up. But... He carried the body into the van and drove the van and dumped and helped him. I change. forgot that he did that. It's been so long. Okay, but uh... I don't want to hang out with you today. <laughs> This man was in first class with me. He was quite shaken up by the whole affair. <laughs> I did it! I made it the whole flight! I'm not scared of turbulence anymore! He must have been pretty scared. He's repeating the same thing over and over to himself. Aw, oh, that poor dude. Gumshoe. So how is the initial investigation going? We just shipped the body off to the coroner's office. And we're taking statements now, sir. That sounds like Franziska. She was always good at quick responses to a case. I'd say she was, uh, a little too quick, sir. Oh? How so? Uh, um, I rushed on over as soon as I got word of the affair, sir. But somehow when I got here, Miss Von Karma was already here barking out orders at everyone. It was kind of creepy. As though she knew there had been a murder or something. Oh, if she was in on the murder? That'd be crazy. <laughs> what a twist. That'd be awesome. And had come in advance to await your flight's arrival. 
That is sort of odd. She did show up rather quickly and out of the blue. I wondered that. Plus, I still don't see why she's here in America. There must be some backstory to all of this. Maybe she wanted to greet you when you came back. And then she's like, wait, um, he killed a guy? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> well, wasn't... At, okay, at the end of the second game, I'm trying to remember this, there was that whole, like, big sequence where they were They're talking the in the airport, and yeah. then she cries and then leaves. Yeah. Was she leaving back for America or for Germany? Germany. Germany. So uh, And then she came she... back for Trials and Tribulations. Right. And then we're going to find out what she's been doing since then, until now, essentially. She's like, I've been in America. I'm getting things. spa days. Not this. No. Can you imagine Francis got a spa? Yeah. No. I can imagine that. She would be, like, barking. She, she would be like Azula. Is this a cherry? <laughs> yes, princess. <laughs> she could be like that. But keep, keep in mind, she was pretty nice to, like, Sister Bikini. And okay, stuff but Sister like that. Bikini, it's like, how could you not be nice to her? She's like, oh, I'm a, I'm a nice If she's aggressively lady. flirting with you and you're, like, 30 years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not sexual harassment if it's woman on man. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> Goodness for you. This one Carmen just kind of popped up at the prosecutor's office about a week ago, sir. Something about chasing down leads related to a certain incident. No details? It's kind of top secret, so she can't talk about it. Even with me, Maybe sir. Maybe Mr. Stewart was, uh, with the government. Like, like, <laughs> like Mr. It, Mr. Stewart. Stewart. <laughs> and then, like, she's like, oh, I gotta chase down this guy. And then she's like, oh, taken care of. Wait. <laughs> yeah. It's, we looked in his wallet. We found a chaos emerald. I <laughs> 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 wouldn't fit in a wallet. The chaos emerald's like the size of a hand. Big wallet. <laughs> a wallet that's like the size of a He had purse. a big wallet. Because it had, like, his ID card and stuff. Okay, but that's, like, the, um, I can't think. The <laughs> lanyard. That's, like, a lanyard one. That's not big enough to hold a Chaos Emerald. This is, like, five minutes of us actually playing the game and 25 minutes of us talking about Mr. Stewart. And Francisca. <laughs> and Francisca. Knowing her, the only type of talking she likes to do is with her whip. Plus, I doubt the top secret part was what stopped her from talking to you, Detective. Although, I wonder if her case has anything to do with mine. Anyway, that's about all the info I have, sir. We should find out more as we investigate. Yes, it is high time to resume my investigation. Starting with talking to the people involved in this case afresh. Yes, sir! Oh, bye. Go, 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 Joe, say. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, I think something just fell out of your pocket. Hmm? What are you... Ugh. So did something fall out or not? I didn't, um, get a good look, sir. It doesn't concern you, so don't worry about it. My prosecutor's badge of all things. Gumshoe must never know that I dropped it. Right. <laughs> yeah, see, that's a travel wallet. It is super small. Check out this bloody cloth. Detective Gumshoe, this is... Oh, is that for me? Oh, you shouldn't have, sir, but I'll gladly take anything you want to give to me. Hands off, detective. This item is related to the case. Uh oh Um, so, um, what about it did you want to ask me about? Forget I asked, detective. Okay, is there something else we can present, or can we just walk? Let's oh, we can walk just walk. on plane. March tw Whoa! I didn't remember the pilot being like that! What's up, dude, bros? He's like, he's like Godot before he turned white. He's like Godot meets Sonic meets, uh... Um, meets Sissel, because he's got the glasses. Sissel? Maybe. Or like, who's that dude that's the... Okay, this is very random stretch. Um, Remember the P Peter and Lotta books with the goat uh, guy... Uh, the guy who dresses up as the Christmas goat, but he's like a lumberjack and he's got that hair. Oh, uh, vaguely. Vaguely, yeah. It it's been like a very that. long time since I've read those books. <laughs> yeah. March 12th, 1.47 p.m. Uh, yeah, whatever. So you must be the captain. What? Yes, I am. And who might you be? <laughs> I am the prodigy prosecutor Francisca von Karma, and I have a few questions for you. Uh, don't you dare, Captain. Getting friendly with another woman... I'll never forgive you if you do. What are you talking about? I only have eyes for you, my dear Cammy. I wouldn't bet money on our dear captain to be much of a reputable person. Sure you don't want to ask the captain some questions, sir? He was in the cockpit the entire time. I highly doubt There's you would know of anything There's a thing called abuse. autopilot for a reason. And co-pilots. And co-pilots. Anyway, I like to leave that type of witness to Francisca and her whip. I love Cammy's theme, though. But I wanted to talk to Francisca some more! 
March 12th, 1.40 oh. p.m. I forget the accent I gave this guy For again. For the fifth time? <laughs> um, now see here! Yeah! Sorry, sorry, sorry! I'm sorry! How long do you intend to hold me? It is impossible for me to be the criminal, I told you! Mr. LeBlanc? Oh, it is you. Tell this man to stop stopping me from going. Time is money. I don't even have one second of wasteful time to spend. Well, bye. He just left. Guess we can run. Oh. Looks like we can't go beyond here, sir. Plus, the body has been sent off to the medical examiner's office for an autopsy. Will there be an updated autopsy? We'll update it ourselves. Did you finish taking his statement yet? Yep, all done, sir. I do not concern- I do not concern if you're not done examining my cargo hold! I want my cargo back! If you make a single scratch on my art, you will pay! Art? What sort of art? Mr. Reblanc is an art dealer, so he's got a bunch of artwork down in the cargo hold, sir. There's practically a mountain of them, large and small. I wonder what kind of paintings he makes. Oh. Oh, it's all <laughs> kinds. From folk costumes to stone statues, I sell all kinds of art. This could be... Really weird. Related to the missions, are you thinking? <laughs> no, related to the murder. What if he's like, I need to make some sort of daring, amazing art piece, and he kills this man in the elevator, and he's like, oh, the beauty, <laughs> the beauty of it all. He's like painting it, and then that's- No, 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 he buys and sells art. He doesn't make the art. I thought he made the art. No, I, no. He he's deals, he's an art dealer, but he doesn't actually like buy or sell the art. He, he's kind of the person I where you ask like, so what do you think of this art piece? Is it like Trey Chic? Absolutely! A... Pay me five million dollars! <laughs> how do you get that job? <laughs> um, you yell a lot. Yeah. And have five chins, apparently. <laughs> Three at least. Folk costumes. Speaking of which, Mr. LeBlanc's hat. It kind of looks like that other piece of cloth. Does it now? It does, indeed. Uh what the hell? This one. Uh, it just it looks like a swimsuit. It's the same pattern, though. Right. This oh, it's it's pink. Oh my gosh. Did you not notice it was pink? I thought it was red. When I lean it's got back the blood versus stain. leaning forward, it's pink, and then it goes red. Oh, you're looking at the TV screen. Yeah. Not my computer. Okay. Mr. Le LeBlanc, can you please take a look at this for me? Hmm? Oh, it is a Borgenian cloth. As I suspected, your hat is made of the same material, I suppose. Yes, of course! This fabric is so famous, orders come from over the seas for more. Okay, oh. it's Borgenian. Then this is the cargo you were talking about earlier. No, no, no! My cargo this time is many, much, many gigantic. You, detective, when can I have my cargo moved? Uh, you can get your cargo back when we're done investigating, pal. The stubbornness of you police, it is no good. And it is no good that attendant refuses to exit from attendant's room, too. That attendant? I wonder if he's talking about Miss Tenero. Eek. She's doing okay. Maybe she had something really bad to eat. I kind of like his theme, too. It's like it's the, ex fine. the exotic music. What did you mean by that attendant, Mr. LeBlanc? She was taken into the attendant's room for her interview. And then they still have not come out. They have no make sign of coming out either. I was finished with my own interview much earlier, quicker than her. Why is Miss Tenero's interview the only one that's taking up so much time? Miles Edgeworth. You were given free reign to examine the plane, weren't you? Yes, I was able to obtain the cooperation of the flight attendants. Speaking of attendants, I'd like to speak with Miss Tenero. I wonder if you might grant me permission to enter the flight attendants' room? Hmm. Before I do, you still have to clear up a few issues surrounding your own circumstances. I understand. You may have tricked those attendants with your sophisticated talking. But you can't pull the wool over my eyes, Miles Edgeworth. Oh yes, we can do a fun argument. <laughs> Francisca's logic, or lack thereof. Let's not complicate things and go with the most obvious conclusion. The scene of the crime was here, in the very lounge the body was discovered. From the time the victim was seen calling for an attendant until his body was found, the only person in this lounge the entire time was you, Miles Edgeworth. This unmistakably makes you the likeliest suspect. Where'd you get those gloves, Franzi? <laughs> I don't know, but They're pretty I cool. like them. Hmm, the likeliest suspect, Franziska? Do you have a problem with that? May I remind you of Turnabout Big Top? <laughs> 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 no, but it's not like you to use such vague wording. You're usually a bit more absolute. I'm 
I'm simply trying to watch out for you. Or is my kindness too hard for you to comprehend? Thank you, but your leniency is unnecessary, for I will prove my innocence soon enough. If I want to continue my investigation, I'll have to break her line of logic fast. <laughs> this is like the most ridiculous argument Because they're ever. basically siblings. They're basically siblings, yeah. Because they both were like essentially raised by Von Karp. Von Karp. <laughs> Man, imagine the terrible conversations they or had. Or because you behave yourself while I go to the spa. <laughs> Who stole the cookie? And they're just like having like rebuttals <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> well, it was obviously Edgeworth because... His fingerprints are on the jar. Oh, well, it was obviously Von Karma. Uh, Von Karma. It was obviously Franziska because her hair is marked nearby. <laughs> there was a I, I trail. Just, I just love the way you said, Who stole the cookie? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, so mad about it. <laughs> that was my favorite. That was, uh, that was my favorite Swedish chocolate cookie. <laughs> Swedish I'm, chocolate no, cookie, okay. yeah. No, the, the, um, what was I... Yeah, I was thinking about that because yeah, my, my yeah. cousin's chocolate got eaten. <laughs> Don't you think you're being a bit rash by simply declaring me to be the culprit? Hmm. I like my affairs to be simple and perfect. I'll show you the meaning of both when I finish this whole thing within three minutes. <laughs> yes! I go to the spa. Hey, you say that like you're cooking a pack of instant noodles. Free ow! I won't allow even three seconds of useless testimony to be uttered in my presence. I see she hasn't changed a bit, but I won't allow her to send me to prison so easily. Yeah, no kidding. The scene of the crime was here. Hold it. So tell me, Franziska, do you know all there is to know about the crime scene? I know all that I need to know in order to arrest you. And nothing more? Are you saying there is more that I need to know? <laughs> ah! Why did you whip me, sir? Sorry, Scruffy. My hand must have slipped. It would appear that Francisca doesn't have all the facts of the case yet. From the time the victim was seen calling for an attendant... Hold it! What do you mean by seen? Please stop pretending like you don't know! It's insulting! Obviously, I'm talking about how Mr. Hicks was seen calling for an attendant at 5 a.m. And then, from the time after the call until the body was found... The only person in the lounge was you. Hold it. While it's true that I was in the lounge the whole time, that fact alone does not make me the criminal. Objection! Huh, we'll see about that in the conclusion of this investigation. However, there is one thing that even you must admit at the time. Francisca, do you have shoulder pads? Probably. Because she's Hold got like, a huge, like... Or it's the puff sleeves. Those aren't like the sleeves part, that's like the shoulder part. But yeah, puffy sleeves, they go from the shoulder to here. It's like when you have a ball gown, like Cinderella, she has, um, puffy sleeves. Like that. Yeah, for a ball gown. But this... that can happen on other okay, clothes, okay. I guess. I don't know. Under the circumstances, I suppose I can agree that I am the most likely suspect. But, but I believe in you, sir. I don't think you did it. Miss Von Karma's gotta believe that too, right? I mean, you two are like siblings. Ow! <laughs> Quiet, Scruffy. Even if we were related by blood, that's no guarantee that he's not a criminal. Franziska. I demand to see some proof that you are not the guilty party. Franziska's basically what makes you think the guilty party is it? Miles you. Edgeworth! Whoa! The likely a suspect, huh? What a roundabout euphemism. But it would appear that she doesn't yet know about the new evidence that we acquired and where we acquired it. I'll take care of the gaps in her logic one hole at a time. Let's not complicate things. Well, there are the wine. Grape, yeah. The grape, not the wine, the grape juice for prince. Hey! What the heck? That's right, though. And I believe that when you use the phrase, I believe, you are anything but certain. Which means that showing me that piece of evidence is just a waste of time. Nah! She even managed to whip the evidence at the same time! <laughs> Ow! Why did you whip me too, sir? That's one more victim besides myself in the evidence. The scene of the crime was here. Maybe it's the suitcase because we Oh, found it was that. used to transport the body. Whoops. Objection! Sorry about that. It's the grape juice footprints! No. Can you tell it's been a while since I played this? It's been a week. I almost said a month. No, it's been like a year since I played this. 
Oh, the right. The whole case. No, it's been like 10 years since I played this. Yeah, I was like, one year? That's it? It would appear that you did not have all the information you needed after all. And what does that mean? I found a nice piece of evidence just before I was forced to stop investigating. A piece that proves that the body was moved from a different location. The killer used this suitcase to move the victim's body. Meaning that the real scene of the crime is not this lounge at all. Objection! Now who's the one rashly jumping to conclusions? Excuse me? All you did was find this piece of cloth inside the suitcase. That doesn't prove that the body was moved. It could be that the killer simply chose the suitcase as a good place to hide the cloth. I expected you would come to that conclusion. It would seem I can't escape that easily. You should know better than that. A Von Karma is perfect in every way. Ah, but did you know that the killer definitely wheeled the suitcase around at some point? Objection! As if there's proof of that! Where's the proof that the suitcase was moved around? Oh, now we're getting to the grape juice for this. All it takes is one look at my prosecutor's badge and you'll have your answer. <laughs> Indeed, I have my answer now. That you are an ignorant whippersnapper! Ah! Or rather that you are the unforgiving whippersnapper. The suitcase ended up in the in-flight shop, but where did it come from? The answer should become clear if I just think about the path the killer took. Spilled grape juice in the front of the elevator! Yes, and I'd like to draw your attention to this area here. Oh, really? We have to do this too? Where is the evidence proving that the suitcase was dragged? Well, it's those wheel marks! Oh yeah, we presented those earlier, but we <laughs> take a look at this. <laughs> and what exactly am I looking at here? <laughs> Get a load of this. <laughs> I don't like to repeat myself, but I suppose it can't be helped if you didn't spot it on your own. Now then, I'll... Get on with it and tell me the answer already. I wonder if she saw for my blunder. Well, she just penalized you, so yeah. Wheel in the sky keeps on turning. Turn this mark here, wouldn't you say that it looks suspiciously like tracks from two wheels? I suppose. Further, there's also grape juice residue on the wheels of the suitcase. This means that the suitcase containing the victim's body definitely passed through here. I suppose this means that the killer did move the victim's body from somewhere else. I'm glad you've come to your senses. Objection! Not so fast! This still doesn't put you in the clear. Not by a long shot! Oh, why, Francisca? Yes, Francisca. You've prepared yourself and acquired the piggy bank before the plane hit the turbulence. I can't talk! And then you waited for the victim in the lounge where you beat him to death. Then, while you were in the elevator with the victim's body stuffed in the suitcase, the plane hit that patch of turbulence and out flew the body from within the suitcase. With no way out, you hastily put the suitcase back where you had taken it from, and pretended to be the discoverer of the body. <coughs> Not a bad bit of logic for someone, something you thought of on the fly. <coughs> <laughs> and I thought of it so fast I coughed like a storm. Yep. Just what are you insinuating? But I will show you exactly how flawed your logic is. I think I already know what it is. No matter how strong of a face you put on, not even you can hide your fears from me. I'll expose the flaws in her testimony in one fell swoop. So what do you think it is? Well, she said if we're in the elevator, but clearly we weren't in the elevator when that happened with the turbulence. Why? Well, there would have been grape juice in the elevator, right? No, the grape juice fell outside the elevator. There was nothing- no grape juice in the elevator. Oh. It's just around, because the glass fell while the doors There would closed. have been, um... Here, the piggy it... bank we got from that weird glass, right? Yeah, see, there's no grape juice in the elevator. I know there's something that... You can't get the piggy bank before the plane hit the turbulence, because it hit the turbulence and wasn't that what broke the glass? Yeah. So then that's the problem. Right. Hold it. And how do you suppose I was able to take the piggy bank out of its display case? As I recall, the case is locked. That's easy. If the case was locked, you simply had to hit the glass. Like this! Yow! You, you've shattered my heart of glass! So she wants to talk about the in-flight shop and then Mr. iFly Bank, does she? That takes care of how you obtained the murder weapon. And then you waited for the victim. Hold it! 
I thought there wasn't any of the victim's blood found in the lounge. Hm. I thought you'd say that. What, did you think I wouldn't have noticed? I think you just found a way to cleverly hide the blood splatter in the lounge. By accidentally spilling grape juice on top of it! Yeah. Are you accusing me of tampering of the crime scene now? We'll see, won't we? The forensic scientists are hard at work on that as we speak. And? What do you propose I did after that? Then, while you were in the elevator... It's good. Good music. So I took the victim's body and put it into the suitcase, and then... Where was I headed, Francisca? That's pretty obvious. You were bringing it to first class, where you could safely keep an eye on it. We're talking about this thing, you know. I'd hardly call it discreet or ordinary. Hm. Annoying brat. Well, then you were intending to leave it inside the elevator. But unfortunately for you, a wrench was thrown in your plans because... The plane hit turbulence. It do that does happen. Yeah. Have you ever... Have you ever had the plane hit turbulence while you were in the in-flight restroom? Like in I'm not sure airplane? if I've ever used the in-flight restroom. Ever? Maybe when I was, like, really young, but... I go before we, I get on the we've plane! We've gone on, like, five-hour flights! How have you never had to use the bathroom on the plane? I go before I get on the plane. Yes, yeah, same! You... And I don't really eat on the plane, except for, like, the gummy candies to same. stop your ears from popping. you, like, drink the water or whatever on the plane that you get, or <laughs> apple juice or whatever. <laughs> drink the beer like Aladdin. <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm just shocked. No one's I could get that. never do that. But yeah, I've had a few times where... I've I, only been on, like, one or two hour, five-hour flights. All of our flights have been, like, two hours. Two hours. Yeah, if it's two hours, you don't need to. I had one time where we were flying, I think, a five-hour flight. And I was like, oh, I guess I'll use the bathroom now. And I got up, and as soon as I got in there, like, they're like, we'll be beginning our descent, like, to our location. And then, like, the entire thing was just like... <laughs> like, being, like, rumbling and, like, bumping around. I'm like, this is Not great. Good. This you, is great. You've experienced turbulence on a flight before. Of course. Many times. You get used to it after a while. The patch we hit was especially rough, and I passed out briefly, but only for a second. Good thing it was only for a sex, sir. It'd be bad if you had really blanked out. Yes, indeed. Unfortunately, blanking out is exactly what got me into this mess in the first place. That's enough of your idle chatter. I'm not through with you yet, Miles Edgeworth. Yeah. No way out, you hastily put the suitcase back! Hold it! Where'd you get the whip? Humph. If I really were a criminal, do you really think I would be caught so easily? Objection! You are certainly in the middle of being caught right now! Yeah! I have to find a contradiction fast or I won't have much of my own hide left to save. I have to say, you're looking rather caught right now. And I'll tell you exactly what you did after that. You loitered around in the lounge. Playing the piano. And pretended to be the discoverer. It's because it's one of those pianos that like the keys press itself. Yeah. But he was just like pretending to play yeah. the piano. Look how good I am. I didn't pretend to be anything. I really was the first to discover the victim's body. I suppose that's true. Hmm. So then, you are yielding to my statements? Don't be foolish. I still insist that you were the killer, but... In that sense, you really were the first to discover the body to be dead. No matter what I say, she seems dead set on making me out to be the killer. Her logic is reasonably sound, and the large majority of it reflects the truth. However, there is one point that about it that is not quite right. Was I right? Is it because I can't open the thing because of the turbulence? It, yeah! Because it was after the turbulence I was taking out. The fact that you took this piece of evidence into account in your testimony is to be commended. Your legal prowess is certainly something to be feared. Evidence and logic. Essential tools that those who would stand in a courtroom must learn to master. But what if there was a fake piece of evidence thrown into the mix? A fake? This Mr. Ifly piggy bank is just a fake. It is not the real murder weapon. What?! The timing of when the bank was taken from the shop is quite important. And it was taken after the turbulence had occurred. But then, what about the blood on the bank? What do you make of that? I assume it was added after the murder when the killer fabricated this weapon. Looking at it this way, the killer basically did three things after the turbulence. After exiting the elevator- Wow, I wonder who the killer is! 
<laughs> what do you mean? It's a guy, and it's probably the pilot. <laughs> or maybe they just used a generic fan, a uh, sprite for that. I think it's that same sprite, but they just took the color out. And then the killer brought the suitcase to the shop and left it there. Then the killer proceeded to pick the bank up off of the floor. And took it to fabricate a fake murder weapon by hitting the victim on the head. Finally, the victim's wallet was planted on my personage, in my pocket to be precise. Everything was done so that I would be framed for the murder of Mr. Ackby okay, Hicks. Okay, this is all revolving around the idea that there was a turbulence patch, which you couldn't have predicted. And once you're the pilot, <laughs> we're experiencing <laughs> some turbulence! <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's what happened. Oh my gosh, I hope that's what happened. Well, because like, otherwise I don't know how the heck it would work. You there! Yes, ma'am! Other than this piggy bank, was anything else resembling a murder weapon found? Oh, we didn't find anything in this lounge or in the shop that could be used as one, ma'am. Most of the items that could have been used were broken during the turbulence. And the remaining items all tested negative for any trace of blood. I see. Well, Miles Edgeworth, it appears your stall tactics are at an end. But it's possible that it's just hidden somewhere, sir. Yeah! The criminal had wanted to hide the weapon in a safer place. I think the weapon would have been hidden in the same place as the bloody cloth. Exactly what I was thinking. Because the cloth was hidden inside the suitcase, it signals to me that the killer had not prepared a more secure place to hide the evidence. Which means that the real murder weapon is either still on the murderous personage, or is still at the real crime scene. Objection! There is one more possibility. And that would be... That the piggy bank is in fact the real weapon. But didn't we just? Let me finish. The killer took the bank out of from the display case before the turbulence. Aww. They couldn't have given Francesca her own hold it voice. Hold it! <laughs> there. By opening the lock on the display case door. And it was at that time that the glass pane in the door was broken. I'd say that's a perfectly reasonable line of reasoning, wouldn't you? Let's see. So that means that the killer had the key to the display case. Francisca, the person you're talking about. Not so fast. I'm not finished. The person I'm talking about also committed another sin. She tricked the captain and granted you permission to conduct your investigation. Yes, it is the sin of lying! Speaking of which, I recall that you also wish to speak with her? Yes. Very well. Permission granted. But only if I can sit in on your interrogation. I, I don't object to that at all! <laughs> Do we understand each other? I have no intention of interrogating her. But you are welcome to accompany me if you so wish. Miss Tenero is in the flight attendant's room. Let's move. Well, we'll just have to go there next time. I thought... We're at the 48 minute mark. That's Come on. true. Thanks for watching, everyone. Tune in next time. So Marty is now convinced... The that's pilot! The that it's the captain. Oh, we're... Hey, hey, bros, that, I'm the okay, captain. No, that is the equivalent of, like, when you're on the phone, it's like, oh, sorry, you're breaking up. <laughs> but, like, but literally being like, we're uh, to fasten your seatbelts, like, we're gonna be doing a, some slight turbulence coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, look forward to that next time. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.